Good morning, dear friends. We are gathered here for this Mass of the 18 week in ordinary time. This Mass is going to be offered to you. Pray for your intentions and your needs. We pray for all those who have sent intentions and sent requests for prayers, special prayers. Those who are sick, those who are grieving, and those who have lost a lot as a result of this virus that God may grant you the blessings of abundance with whatever is left in your hands right now that's my prayer for you we pray for our country as we continue to face these battles at different fronts the economic struggle this virus and the tensions around our country we pray for greater understanding and a unified force to face these battles. We also invite you to bring your intentions and let us pray together. Don't forget to pray for those who have birthdays and those who have anniversaries today. So we begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. We prepare ourselves, dear friends, for this Mass. Let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer the prayers with unceasing kindness. For those who glory in you as their creator and guide, may you restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Our first reading is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, All you who are thirsty, come to the water. You who have no money, come. Receive grain and eat. Come without pay and without cost. Drink wine and milk. Why spend your money on what is not bread? your wages, and what fails to satisfy. Give me, and you shall eat well. You shall delight in rich fare. Come to me, heedfully, listen, that you may have life. I'll renew with you the everlasting covenant. The benefits assured to, to David. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is gracious and merciful. Slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all, towards all his works. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. 
the eyes of all look hopefully to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The hand of the Lord feeds us. He answers all our needs. A second reading is a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword? No. In all these things we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus heard of the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place. And it's already late. Dismiss a crowd so that they can go and buy food. Go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. But they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, so in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about 5,000 men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, on this, as we begin this, um, today is already the second day of August. I don't know if anyone imagined that in August our country will still or our world will still be in this place. Not sure of what the future of this virus looks like. Not sure what normalcy will look like if ever we get it you know in the next few months. Not even sure if that is going to happen. Not even sure if our kids are going to have a normal life in school, a normal life seeking employment. Now, these are all very distressing things to even imagine or think about. Not even sure if we would have 
no mercy in losing our loved ones and giving them the burial or the final farewell as we normally would do things. So there's so much change already in our lives. The Lord is not ended. And we're not sure how things are going to turn out. But because we believe in the hand of one who holds the universe itself in place, we trust that he is going to navigate this ship, this ship, to very, very safe shores. We trust that he will provide for us in ways we yet don't even imagine or can't even imagine. Because as the prophet Isaiah tells us, just as the heavens are far from the earth, so are God's plans and God's ways so far from ours. That's why sometimes we can't even imagine what is on God's mind. I'd like for us to reflect from the gospel reading today. John the Baptist had been arrested and put to death. Herod had killed him. And when Jesus heard of this news, I'm sure he was devastated. Because as the Bible tells us, the death of every one of us matters to God. That's what the psalmist tells us. God takes to heart the passing of everyone. So the passing of John the Baptist was particularly painful for the Lord. So he withdrew, I'm sure, to go grief his cousin. He wanted some place where he could spend time by himself and just meditate and just reflect on the life of John the Baptist and the fact that he had just been murdered. But there wasn't enough time to do that. There wasn't enough time for him to even just be by himself. The crowds were looking for him. So the moment they heard where he was going to, they got there before he did. And scripture says, when he disembarked, he saw the vast crowd. And his heart, as always, was moved with pity for them. And he cured their sick. When it was evening, when it was evening, so that means they spent the whole day with the Lord. When it was evening, the disciples came to him. The disciples were concerned that these guys may not have had their lunch and there's a chance they will not have their dinner because there's no way they are able to feed them in this place, this very deserted place. So out of concern for their safety, they came to the Lord to ask permission so that they could dismiss the crowd. I'm sure that's what I would be thinking myself. If I was there uh, as one of the lieutenants, I would come to him and say, Master, please, it's time. We need to get these guys out of here. We cannot take care of them. And so that's what the disciples did. And Jesus said, no, we're not doing that. We are not dismissing them. You go get them something to eat. And I'm sure he said this to try these guys who had been with Jesus for these years, at least three years or two plus years already. He wanted to give them a try because they have seen him raise the dead. They have seen him cast out demons. They have seen him do a lot of miracles already. So he wanted to give them a try to see if they understand the power of God walking right now. I'm not saying in the future, right now and in their midst. So he says, no, 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 you go give them something to eat yourself. The guys were like, what? From where? All we have here is just five loaves and two fish. Are you crazy? And Jesus realized that these guys were not up to it. St. Paul tells us we live by faith, not by sight. And this was the difference between the apostles and Jesus. Jesus was, was, was living by faith in God. That 
in faith in God, five belly loaves can feed 5,000 plus with 12 wicker, wicker baskets left over. For the apostles, five belly loaves could barely feed 12 of them plus Jesus. Now that was the difference. And so when Jesus realized that they were not up to it, that they did not get, they are not getting the lessons right. See what he says. He says, bring them here to me. I'm sure if they got the lesson, he would say, come on, then go ahead and do it. Just like the Lord told Moses. He says, you have it in your, you just go strike the rock. Let's strike the, strike the rock first. Or strike the sea in both times. So at all times, God does not leave us unequipped. We may not recognize how equipped we have been and how equipped we are. And the moment we feel like we are insufficient, we are inadequate, that we don't have it all together, then we will not be able to see everything that God has placed around us, all that he has equipped us with. We will not be able to use what we have. My hope is that today, that God may help you recognize what you still have. For the disciples, they just had five belly loaves and two fish. So Jesus said, bring them here to me. That means, put, put them in my hands. Put them in my hands. And because I realized in your hands, five belly loaves cannot do more than feed just 12 of you. But put them in my hands. So the disciples went and brought the loaves and put them in his hands. And Jesus, the Bible said, he took these five belly loaves, turned up to heaven, and gave thanks and broke it and gave it back to them. He said, you go now, feed these guys. And scripture records that 5,000 men, to say nothing of women and children, fed from five loaves and two fish. At a time like this, where we are beset by so much, so much is uncertain. There is so much uncertainty around us. At a time where we feel we don't have it together to survive or thrive, what we have, we just see maybe our finances just depleting. We see our opportunities just diminishing or just disappearing. We could have the anxiety of the apostles thinking, well, we can't handle this problem. 5,000 or maybe 7,000 or 10,000, we just can't, this is too much for us. We better just cut, cut loose. All right, that's what they were going to do, cut loose. Find our way. Let them, let them do everything be to itself, all right? We just manage ourselves. Yeah, that may be the easier thing to do. So maybe you're looking for an easy option right now. There are better options. They don't have to be easy, but there are better options. And my hope is that like the apostles, you could recognize what you still have. I don't know what you have right now, but I hope you can recognize what you still have. And once you recognize what you still have in you, I hope you are able to see. And if you cannot see what what you have can bring to you and what you can do with what you have, my hope is that you would have the, the faith to do the one thing, bring it to the hands of Jesus. The beautiful song says, bring it to him. So my hope is that you will do that today without fear but with great faith that if you still have anything whatever it is that you have if you can turn that into the hands of jesus believing that in his hands what you have will take care of you what you have is enough to make sure in the words of the prophet elisha that this oil would never be dry and that this um bushel of flour will never run out until the day the Lord sends down rain. So, as believers, let us begin to hold and to hang on to the one essential ingredient, uh, ingredient or element of our lives, which is our faith. As Paul reminds us, we live by faith, not by sight. By sight, we see things that overwhelm us. By faith, we see things that we all we, that underwhelm and we overwhelm them because of the power of God effective and effective in us. So may God who has called us and may God who has equipped us, may God who has blessed us, 
may God who has prepared this world in place before we were placed in it and knows how everything is going to go. May that same God open the eyes of our minds that we are able to see what his plan is for us. As always, I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that you are still the delight of Almighty God, that God loves you very much. Let us say the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ challenges us to exchange the material riches of this world for the eternal wisdom. Let us lift our hearts in prayer and seek His grace as we strive to please God. That our faith in the heavenly riches may free us from this worldly obsession with things whose value fades quickly and focus on building lives and relationships for the glory of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those blessed with wealth may recognize the struggles of the poor, their poor neighbors, and work ever hard for the better world order. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for our soldiers and our families, especially any whose loved ones may be sick at this time, battling divisions and conflicts, or any who may be grieving the loss of their loved ones, that God may come to their help and grant them his comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the tragedies caused by nature or human cruelty, especially those caused by the coronavirus, may not destroy our resolve, but challenge our best angels as we walk to support victims. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For people in our country and around the world, that we may walk daily to create an environment where everyone feels valued and respected, and where everyone realizes that the success of our common mission depends on each of us, and help us take responsibility for the needs of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have asked our prayers at this time, and for those who need God's special intervention, that they may feel the power and grace of God overwhelming their problems and their fears and granting them courage and confidence to face this moment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who celebrate birthdays or anniversaries today, that God may grant them many more years to celebrate and to give thanks. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, 
And blessed is the fruit of our womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Amen. Most gracious God, hear this consent we have brought before you. Please accept them and grant them through Christ our Lord. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given, and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be thou forever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spirit to him. Blessed be thou forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Graciously sanctify this gate of war, and accepting the oblation of this special sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts and lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall may be at once the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices with prayer join with us in one chorus of exultant praise as we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks he broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. We do this in memory of you. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered in so one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Timothy, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant for our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. My dear friends, from me to all of you, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word that my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Now let us ask God's blessings and grace for spiritual communion. Most merciful God, Today, in the miracle of the Lord, you foreshadowed this great sacrament of your own body and your blood. As your sons and daughters are still unable to attend Mass and to receive you physically, we ask, dear God, that those ask you nourish these 5,000 men and women and children, that you may nourish the hearts of all your children who seek this sacrament. And as they receive you, O God, in spirit, may they find grace for every need. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection of all those you renew with this heavenly gift, and in your never failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sins of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, 
I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us and listeners. And I pray that God may bless you and that God may watch over and that God may keep you. Like I said, whatever you have, whatever you still have in your hands, whatever you still have in your life, bring it to Jesus if you do not know what to do with it. And that means your problems, whatever it is that you have, bring it to Jesus. Ask the Spirit to guide you just so that the scales may fall from your eyes and from your mind that you are able to see what you can do with what you have right now. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. To the prayers of our Blessed Mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will sing the summons for our final our final hymn. <clears throat> When you come in from morning, if I do call your name, when you go where you don't know, I never leave the same. Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my